Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Tuesday, which means it's time for a map test. Now, the map tests are kind of evolving recently. What is a map test? Well, Matt Cluley in my office, I show him a trick and I get his opinion on it. When we first started the map test, he knew nothing about magic. So it was interesting listening to it from a muggle's point of view or a layman's point of view. Now, as anybody who's been following the match inventory will know, he has been doing a lot more magic. So I have to be a little bit more creative when it comes comes to actually these map tests because it's it's as much as a test for me as it is for him trying to fool him with uh, a new trick you know it's kind of very difficult to do sometimes uh, but I think I've cracked it with this week's map test what we have here is permanent record by Ben Seidman and Vanishing Ink and this is a great trick this has come out recently I'm really a big fan of this I think it's amazing I really do um uh, and myself and Ryland reviewed it recently. We gave it a great review and for good reason. It's a really good trick. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to do a performance to Matt uh, and get his thoughts on it. And then after I've done the performance to Matt, we'll talk about what uh, what, what I, I've learned from performing this Matt, to Matt. How you doing, Matt? What up, dude? Um, so I know you know quite a bit about magic now and I have to really think about uh, performing to you if I'm going to try and fool you. I have to kind of think about stuff. And I've got to be honest, I don't think this is going to fool you because you understand what a force is, don't you? You know what a force is. You know yeah. that I can make you pick a particular card. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the concept of a psychological force or a, a, a psych force? It's also known as. Is that like... Um... I think so. It's kind it's not, of like yeah, It's not a physical force. It's more like I'm influencing you, a right? It's my, like yeah. I'm influencing you, and it's more sort of the, the sort of thing Darren Brown would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got, and and it's not like I'm spreading out or having a pack of card, having a card picture or anything like that. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and influence you, but I don't think it's going to work because you're starting See, to think already. I'm beginning to think that that's bullshit. No, it's really not. I don't think this is going to work just because I know how you think. You think like a magician. No, but let me ask you a question. I, I just heard you say that something that you're going to do, you don't think is going to work. No, it'll Which work is... on pretty much anyone else, but I don't know if it'll work on you. So I'm here's not... the question. How many cards in a pack of cards? Including jokers? No, forget the jokers. Just how many cards in a pack 52. of cards? 52 cards in the pack of cards, right? Now, if I ask you to name the card that you think would be the most commonly named card in the pack, what would you say? Ace of Spades. And that's a free choice, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Ace of Spades. Like, you could have yeah. said anything. You said Queen of Hearts is probably even more psychologically appealing. So is the King of Spades. Like, it's not just the Ace of Spades. I mean, you know as a magician, you've probably had people say the Ace of Spades quite a lot, but there are a lot of other cards that are named as well. Okay. But when I came out and I was holding the deck of cards, did you feel influenced at all? No. Because you named anything, you named the Ace of Spades, yeah? Yeah. And yet on the card box, you can see that I have an Ace of Spades printed <laughs> on there. Yeah. Now that is a... That, no, you can... And you, one you, there. Uh, yeah, and one there, but I'm talking about <laughs> the one on there. Now that is basically what we call a psych force. Or a, um, you know, it, it, that's basically what a psych force is, right? Uh, but I'm going to see if I can go one step further with this. Let me just close this up. I'm going to see if I can go one step further. Because I'm going to try and... Um, now you understand what a psych force is. We're going to try and go in a different direction, okay? So look. 52 playing cards here. Mm -hmm. All there. All different. This time I'm actually going to get you to touch a card. But I, I know you know what forces are. So I don't want to force you. I want you to just touch anyone you want to. <coughs> Anyone, and you can go back and forth if you want, but you get your finger is going to eventually settle on one. Now, are you sure you want that one? You can change your mind if you want to. That one is fine. I'm not going to switch it or anything. But if you want to change your mind, that's also cool. No, that's cool. We'll that's cool. That can can you look at it? Yeah. Can you can you see it? Yep. Is that fair? Look, watch. Okay. Any fairer, and you would be cheating me at this point. <laughs> You could have picked any one of these, right? Yeah. But you picked one card and one card only. For the first time, what was the name of the card? You want me to tell you? Mm. It's the Ten of Hearts. Did you feel forced? <coughs> Did you feel influenced at all? No. Watch. Do you remember that Ace of Spades? Yeah. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Wow. Forgot to show the camera. Now That's the nice good, thing right? about that is I just put the cards away inside the box and reset. Pretty much, I need to do one more thing, but I'm pretty much reset. It was the Ace of Spades on the back, wasn't it? Yep. Can I look at the cards? No. Well, okay. <laughs> the thing is, I'm, I'm asking you if you can work it out without like examining all the problems. I mean, if you were watching Penn and Teller Fool Us, they wouldn't go, oh, let me look at this, let me look at this, let me look at this. You get, you get one guess and then, and then that's it. And if you get the guess wrong, then, you know, you suck. So you forced the Ten of Hearts, right? But, I, yeah, but I made it very clear that I didn't force the Ten of Hearts. Because I wanted you to realise that that wasn't a force. You genuinely could have touched any card. I mean it. You genuinely could have touched any card. There was no manipulation. That card that you touched was the card that I showed yeah, you. Yeah, when you held it up to show the camera, I kind of looked down the side to see if it was like, if there's two cards. Or there's not. But there's not. It was no, one there, card. There was one card, yeah. So it was one, yeah. And that's like, that's proper on there. Yeah, that's printed on there, yeah. So when you say it's reset, it's reset. It's not because that's not the Ace of Spades anymore. No, but I could reset this in like literally about ten seconds. And that I would be the Ace of Spades again, or whatever I want it to be. You get options with this trick that it could be something else. But that's like on there, man. Like that's examinable. You could give oh, that yeah, to yeah, somebody that's afterwards, and that's examinable. The box is completely examinable. I mean, just how you got that to change, I've absolutely no idea. Did he do a box switch? He must have done a box switch. I had, I the, ca I had the camera on him the whole time. I didn't, I didn't see a box I didn't do a box switch. I didn't see a box switch. You know the problem with a lot of um, people that try to work out magic? And, uh, and you, you're, They make you, it more difficult than Yeah, they is. do. They make it more complicated than it actually is. I mean, you know, you think, oh, you switch the box. Normally, there's a far more direct solution to anything. It's not printed on the other side. Is it? Nope. So is so the box. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't. I've no. no what's idea. interesting about this project is that uh, Ben, who does it, uh, he gives you a couple of different options. So. The box is not gaffed, but the deck is. But you can do this trick without actually using a gaff deck. So there's lots of handlings on the tutorial about how you could do this with a regular deck of cards. So in other words, this would be, you'd have a regular deck of cards in there. You would do this exact same routine. At the end, you're left with a regular deck to go into whatever else that you want to go into. It just happens that they also supply you with a special <clears throat> deck in order to make it look cleaner. How do you change the back of the box? That's the beautiful thing. One, what I love so much what about is this, this trick, on? Is that on for a reason? Not the cellophane. really. I mean, you, you, most people just keep the cellophane on. It keeps the deck in good nick. You know, I mean, when you take it off, you know, you just you just leave the cellophane. But in this particular instance, has that got something to do with how the box changes? It, well, it wouldn't do. How can it? I mean, how would that help? I tell you right now, the cellophane itself has nothing to do with that box changing. So how does the box change? And that's the thing. That's why I love so much about this. You know, there's nothing new in magic anymore. We've discussed this in the past. There's nothing new in magic anymore. But what you have here is you have a... Um, you're going to have to do that. I'm terrible at this sort of thing. Um, what you have here is a moment where, like, the box is changing. 
And I love the fact that they've got this beautiful psychological force at the beginning. And Ben talks about how if it doesn't hit, it doesn't matter. But it draws attention to the box. And then a few seconds later, the box changes. And one thing Ben talks about is you can just give the box to somebody. I mean, I put it down face down on the table. But you can give that box to somebody if you want to. And they can just look at it. And it looks like, the, you know, they can just be holding it. And then when you point out later on, look at the box. And they look back and it's changed. It's like a real moment. I, I did it. And I just like rubbed it and changed it like that. But it can happen in the hands of the spectators. You can have them just say, here, hold on to the box for me. You do whatever you want to do. And then when it turns over... The actual box itself has, you know, changed. So is that a one-time thing, or can you change that back? Yeah, you can change that back. You could change that back to whatever the first force card is that you want. Yeah. So the ten of hearts. You get, you get, ace. you get, you get an ace of spades, and you get, you can change it to an ace of spades and the queen of hearts because psychologically they're the two most popular cards that people name. And I, I had to change the script with you slightly <laughs> because I had to say to you, I knew if I said to you name a card or you know have you got a favorite card name a card i knew that you wouldn't go with the ace of spades or the queen of hearts which is why i said to you yeah. what do you think is the most <laughs> commonly named card but one thing that ben talks about is if you've got a group of people you're performing to you, most males will pick the ace of spades so you say to somebody hey um if i asked you to name a card right now what would you pick and if they go um something else you go oh, interesting what about you what card would you pick what card would you pick what card would you pick and you get somebody that says the ace of spades yeah and then you kind of go into this but the psych force at the beginning is just the lead in for the actual main routine so if that doesn't hit it doesn't matter anyway. it doesn't really matter because if it you know he said it hits 99 percent of the time and i've done this a few times i could see that being the case but worst case scenario if it doesn't hit you just say do you know what it's really interesting that you said that card, because to be honest, most people name the Ace of Spades, which is why there's an Ace of Spades printed on the back of the card box, because that's the card that most people name. Anyway, we're going to try and do something. Then you go into the routine. Yeah. And I love it when magic, where there's a method that maybe won't hit 100%, but if it doesn't hit, it doesn't matter, because it doesn't affect the main part of the routine. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that is nuts how that changed. Because you can, yeah. It was definitely the Ace of Spades, wasn't it? Yeah. It's really clever. Like I say, it becomes a lot more difficult for me to try and fool you with the map test now. I mean, the yeah. most impressive thing about it, I know it's a gaff deck. I yeah, I told you it's a gaff deck. deck. But the gaff deck is not got anything to do with the change of the box. The gaff deck just makes the um, makes the um, naming of the ten. Oh, I've got thing. it. I've got it. I've just figured it out. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Yes, I am. No, you haven't. I've just figured it out, and no, that's haven't. why you won't let me look. Look at what? The book. No, I'm not letting you look at the deck, because the de de genuinely, like, if I, I don't know what you're thinking, but let me just show you this. That, that, that's what I don't want you to see. That's all this is. It's got nothing to do with anything else. I promise. That's right. Okay. That's all the deck does. You can use a regular deck for this. Okay. I think I just figured out he did the back though. No, you haven't. <laughs> no, you haven't. No, you you haven't. don't think so? No. Whisper. Huh? Whisper. No. What? <laughs> no. That, that is. Huh? It's got to be. You're on the right track, but you're not there. You're on the right. You're moving in the right direction. <laughs> but you're veering off course. You're not, you're not, you're not there. That's you're not, not what it is. That, that, you're moving in the right direction, but you're not all the way there. I knew that, yeah. All you've done is you've bought a bus ticket to get to the train station, but you ain't got on the train yet. <laughs> the final destination is still a ways off. Look. We've been talking about this long enough. Does it pass the mat test? Yeah. Do you like it? Until I had time to properly sit there and think about it. Well, even though you've thought about it, you're not 100% right. <clears throat> right. No, but I do like it. It's a brilliant effect. The, that is really powerful. That having that in there and showing the ace of spades. If you then... had someone hold this in between their hands and then just changes, that's like a sponge ball moment right there. Yeah. That's like when that moment where they open up their hand and they see two sponge balls instead of one and they weren't expecting it. That'll be a real kick. I, I, that is the sort of thing that people will just stop there yeah. and just talk about. Well, that's the that's the one thing that I... And I, I know there's various different ways of forcing a card and forcing the ten of hearts and blah, blah, blah. The thing that got me was that. 
was how that changed. Yeah. Because I'm like, holy crap, that's so it's so visual. As I really like, I really like that effect. Out of everything within the trick, that's my favourite bit. Yeah. The fact that the box changes because that's something different that never happens. And then the fact that you can give it to them afterwards and they can, holy shit, yeah, it actually has. That's awesome. It's an awesome effect. It's really cool. I like it. So yeah, it passes the, passes the mat test. And, and I and think it's a... On the project, Ben talks about, and I'll uh, ask me about this later on, he, he talks about a concept called cups, which okay. he uses when he's doing strolling magic to make his magic even stronger. And you can use the cups technique with this to elevate this to an entirely new level. I don't know what cups is. No. But okay. I don't want to say what it is on... The, Obviously not. But I'll tell you later. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's, I like it. You it's like good. it? You yeah, like it? It's I good. like it. Permanent record, Ben Seidman. It's very good. You can get it from all good magic dealers. Um, Matt, thank you once again for a map test. You're welcome. Been practicing one day. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Bless his little cotton socks. So that's permanent record. Now, first of all, if you haven't seen that before, I mean, how awesome is that trick? That moment where the uh, where the, where the box just changes is absolutely killer. And and Matt's reaction to that box changing is the same reaction that you get from pretty much anybody that you ever perform it to. They just can't. It doesn't make any sense. Like it's one of those moments where it's just like, what? Hang on a minute, what? And I really do love the, the, the psych force at the beginning and the way of actually saying, hey, you know, name a card and you get the ace of spades or whatever card that you want to do because it's a great way of, of, of drawing attention to the box without actually drawing attention to the box. It's a great way of saying, well, have a look at this. You see the ace of spades printed on the box. I influenced you. And, you know, that works so much better than saying, Look at this box. You can see that there's nothing printed on it. You can see that there's this printed on it. And it almost draws attention to the box at the beginning. I think one of the reasons this fooled Matt, and when he whispered to me, by the way, he didn't really kind of... He, he, he was kind of moving in the right direction, but nowhere near in the right way. But um, um, what was I saying? Yeah, um, I think one of the reasons this fooled Matt as badly as it did, and it did fool him, is because... He was convinced that that box had been printed with an ace of spades. So that then afterwards, when he saw it was actually a ten of hearts and he was trying to backtrack, you know, even with the knowledge that he's got, he was thinking, well, hang on, deck switch. He was thinking box switch, which is just completely left field. So the comments that Matt made in terms of the trick being really strong, I agree with 100%. The trick is really strong and it's also relatively easy to do if you saw the review that myself and ryland did on um uh, 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 permanent record we talked about how there's so many different options the tutorial that comes with this is great ben is an exceptional teacher he really is and he shines in the tutorial for this trick it's such a really great um uh, tutorial and he covers everything with a fine tooth comb this is a super commercial trick. And I, 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 I think that this absolutely did pass the Matt test. And I highly recommend it. I know that Matt has already said to me he wants to start learning this trick. And I think I know why. It's just a really commercial trick. It's, it's rare to find a card trick that's a card trick, but not really a card trick. And I'll be honest with you, I performed it the way that you actually kind of the main handling that uses the deck of cards that comes with it. But in all honesty, I'm probably not going to use the deck of cards. In all honesty, I'm probably going to be using a regular deck for this. And I'm just going to have the box change. And for me, uh, I don't think having the gaff deck really adds too much. Yes, it makes it really fair in terms of having them pick that 10 of hearts. But I don't think it really adds too much other than that. And I don't think... Um, going in a different direction in terms of forcing the card from a regular deck would diminish the effect on the audience when it comes to the box changing. So there you go. That's the mat test for this week. It's Ben Seidman's permanent record, and you can get it from Vanishing Ink and all good magic dealers. I'll tell you right now, it's a great trick. So there you go, guys. That's another mat test in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video, so look out for that. And don't forget, if you want to find out more about 
uh, Magic TV, if you want to, well, first of all, subscribe, please subscribe, that would be amazing, but also don't forget the Magic TV shop has now launched, it's www.magictv.org, that's www.magictv.org, you can get all of my tricks from there, and you can also get merch and so on and so forth, and more stuff is going to be added very, very soon, but also, more importantly, go check out the Netrix, it's www.thenetrix.com, uh, we're currently having about 20 or 30 people a week signing up, and, um, and, and hardly anyone cancels, hardly anybody leaves and i think the reason is how much value there is on there three four hundred tricks three four hundred slides more being added all the time the silver level's kicking off everything's doing brilliantly so go check out the net tricks if you want to either way i will be back again soon with another video thank you very much for watching my name's craig from magic tv mm -hmm.